Um, yeah, so today I'd like to talk to you about a story which is potentially one of the most uh, significant stories in mankind's history and how software engineers kind of save the day. So the date is July 16th, 1969, and the Saturn V rocket with the Apollo 11 capsule launches off from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center. It has three astronauts on board. It has Commander Neil Armstrong, Lunar Module Pilot Edwin Buzz Aldrin, and Command Module Pilot Michael Collins. Now, approximately 12 minutes after the launch, Apollo, en Apollo 11 enters the Earth orbit. It orbits the Earth 1.5 times before reigniting its final stage of the Saturn V rocket and setting course for the moon. This journey would take three days. On July 19th, the Apollo 11 capsule enters the lunar orbit and it spends approximately one day just orbiting the moon, getting ready for its descent on July 20th. On July 20th, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin enter the lunar module. They separate from Michael Collins and they begin their descent down towards the lunar surface. It's all going pretty well until it isn't. An alarm goes off and something has gone wrong. Okay, so before we find out exactly what went wrong, let's take a step back and look at what happened in the preparation for this mission. And it all starts with this guy. So this is Charles Draper. And he was the first person to get a government contract for the Apollo missions. And what was that contract to do? Design a guidance computer. Easy, right? Well, it's the 60s, so no. Computers are the size of the rooms, and not that long ago, if you asked for a computer, you'd be brought a person. So, he, what does he do? Well, he gets the brightest minds, and he splits them into two teams. Hardware, and can anyone guess the other one? Software. <laughs> and to lead that software team, he employs a very bright mind. Enter Margaret Hamilton. Now, she had a formidable task again with, for herself. She had to design the software when software engineering wasn't really a topic. So how did she do it well? Well, she started off with an in in initiative design. So she developed a system that can multitask in real time, a completely revolutionary concept at the time. Not only did the computer from the Apollo guidance computer have to analyze data from all the sensors and perform navigational calculations. It also had to deal with all the inputs the astronauts were putting in through the DSKY or the display keyboard interface. That might be relevant later. Error detection and recovery. So Hamilton had this idea that if there's an error, it's probably quite a good idea to be able to detect it. There's no point finding out your spaceship is on fire once you're in a fireball. Um, and she also thought it's probably quite a good idea to be able to recover from these errors. And thirdly, she had a strong, strong vision about what the software engineering discipline would look like. And this included testing, testing your software, make sure it works, make sure it works when this fails, make sure it works when this fails, make sure it works when this happens or this happens. And also, you should probably write down what you're doing. There's no point writing the best software in the world if no one actually understands how you've written it. So let's go back to the Apollo 11 capsule. Um, the alarm's not gotten off yet. We're still pretty happy. We're about 35,000 feet above the moon's surface. And we're running at about 80% com computational power. So we got 20% free. I'm pretty comfortable with that. And I think the astronauts were as well. But that wasn't really the case that day. You see, the rendezvous radar was on. Now, this had been accidentally switched on by Neil Armstrong. He flipped a switch. It was an accident. Not an issue, though, because it only took 15% power. So we still got a 5% buffer. Everything's good. Uh, or is it? So you remember earlier, I told you they used the DSKY, or Display Keyboard Interface. And this clever piece of user, in, user um, input worked on a verb noun. So you might type in verb 16 
noun 68. Now the verb 16 means I want you to show me some information. And noun 68 means about the lunar descent, which is exactly what Buzz Aldrin had typed in that day. Now he'd done this so many times in simulations, but in the simulations, the rendezvous radar wasn't on. Now when he types into this command, oh dear. Now I wasn't very good at maths, but if you've only got 100% computational power, 105% doesn't work. So we've got an issue. Enter stage right, the 1202 alarm. Now what does this alarm mean? Well, it basically means you're trying to do too much. I can't handle this. So what do we do? Well, we abort the mission. We say, congratulations to the Soviet Union. You've won this. And we all just uh, walk home and peel the tails between our legs. Spoiler alert, that didn't happen. What actually happened is Hamilton's software did exactly what it was supposed to do. So, uh, yeah, so the software, firstly, it detected the error. It went, I can't handle this much. So it alerted the astronauts with the 1202. Oh look, error detection and recovery. Next, it clearly showed that alarm, making sure the astronauts were aware of it and was able to report this alarm to Mission Control, where through extensive documentation, they were able to diagnose the alarm quickly. Ignore the wrong, uh, oh, just, there we go. And finally, the system was ready to handle this sort of situation. It knew which, priority, which systems to prioritize and which ones to not prioritize, where the essential systems had to be maintained and what could we let go. So I'm going to leave you with a thought. If you were designing software for the moon tomorrow, would your software work? We all design software on a daily basis, whether it's me, myself designing my project for my end of my degree or in your everyday lives. But often we just accept that failure is a point of call. To this day, Margaret Hamilton's software has not had a bug found in it. Can anyone admit to that? No, me neither. But it's a standard we should all strive for. So when you design your next piece of software, I do encourage you to try and make it moonproof. Thank you very much.